Hey, hey, <clears throat> good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mom. I see you on there. Good morning, Diane and Randy. Good to see you guys. Hope everybody's having a good day. Good morning, Mark and Lumberton. Appreciate you letting me know where you're watching from. Good morning. And uh, if you would please share this video, just click the share button right quick and we'll get started. Good morning, Joe. Um, running a little bit late this morning, but uh, we are here on a rainy, rainy day, rainy season, seems like. Good morning, Patrice. Oh boy, uh, one of them days. Good morning, <laughs> good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Angela. Hope y'all having a good day. Good morning, Joseph. Let's turn to the Word of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And let's uh, read out of the Word of God. I want to encourage you today. I want to strengthen. I can't encourage or strengthen you, but I know the Word of God will encourage and strengthen you. So I want to share that with you today. You think what you're going through or what you're dealing with makes you weak. You think that because you struggle with this, that for some reason you can't reach your full potential. But I'm here to tell you that the reason you're struggling, the reason you feel weak is because you're really strong. God says you're strong. When you're weak, he is strong. And we reach our full potential when we become weak, when we go through painful situations. And that's what I want to share with you this morning. God has laid on my heart. Good morning, Sherry. Y'all let me know where you're watching from. Again, please share this video. Appreciate all of you watching. And we'll get into the Word of God this morning. Starting with verse 6. Paul said, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord three times, thrice, three times, that I might de it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I am weak, then I am strong. Paul asked the Lord three times, take this from me. Three times, take this from me. A man that could pray and pray over the sick and they would recover. A man that could um visited by angels. A man that could sing in prison after his back was beaten. A man that seen God do mighty. A man that was stoned and left for dead. A man that had no... There was nothing about this man that you would say, I'm not sure if he's all in for God. I'm not sure if he has not surrendered totally to God. This is a man that completely sold out, abandoned everything for God, yet God allowed him to be buffeted by a messenger from Satan, a thorn in his flesh, a thorn. And you know, it's interesting because he says, it's been given to me, given to me a thorn in the flesh. God give me this. God gifted me this. That's we, we, don't, we don't like that. We don't like to think like that. God gifted me this thorn. What is your thorn today? What are you dealing with? I'm just going to break bad right now and just be completely honest. My thorn is anxiety, sadness, depression. I don't understand it. I don't know why it comes. I can be on the mountaintop one day, and the next day I can meet somebody about say, well, you're bipolar. I don't know. But I can tell you this, that I can be on the mountaintop one day and everything going great and everything can continue going great. And then the next day I may be down in the dumps and, and I'm just going to be completely honest. I can't stand gloomy days, rainy, gloomy days. I can't stand it. I, I can't. I don't like it. I like, I like the sun. I like bright days. But every day is not a sunny day. 
We got to deal with rain. We got to deal with gloomy days. We got to deal with muddy roads trying to get down here in the woods. We got to deal with forgetting our setup and having to get my son to jump on the side by side and bring it down here to us because we left our stand at the house. I have no way to hold the camera. On and on and on this morning. And on top of that, feeling sad. What is that about? And as I was praying this morning, before I ever come down here, God, why? Why? Why can't I just be joyful? Why can't I be like all these other people, these other preachers that talk about how happy they are all the time, how great life is all the time? What is, what's wrong with me? And God took me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and he showed me something. Because, David, if I didn't allow this thorn in your flesh, my thorn, I know what my thorn is. Do you know what yours is? If I didn't allow this thorn, you wouldn't seek me. You wouldn't come after me. Because of your own flesh and your pride, you would go your way. You would seek after your own way. The Bible says there's none that seek after him. We've all gone astray, each to our own way. And the flesh has not changed. The nature of man has not changed. I've been born again. But even though I've been born again, I, I battle my flesh. The devil's not my greatest enemy. My greatest enemy is David Pate. Because I battle. I battle against what God wants me to do. I struggle against the way he's at pushing me or taking me. The Spirit is leading me because of my flesh. And so God has given me a thorn of flesh, a thorn in my flesh. God has given you a thorn in your flesh. God gives his people a thorn in their flesh. He give it to me. God give me this is what Paul said. God, he didn't say Satan has come after me and attacked me and put this thorn in my He said it's been given to me, a thorn in my flesh. I prayed three times, God, take this from me. God says, no, I'm not going to take it from you, Paul. I give you that. Paul received revelations. He went into the third heaven. Glory to God. He saw God. He, he saw the throne of God. He saw, he saw I, let me back up. I don't know that he saw the throne of God, but he went into third heaven. Can I get an amen? He went up there and he saw things that he couldn't even speak of. He saw things that the language, our language can't put into articulate. He saw the glory of heaven. He saw things that would have made him so prideful. And I, I, it's so hard to understand. How could that make me prideful? You know how? Because God did something special in his life. He took him to a place that he saw things that he couldn't talk about. Who could he talk that? Who could he talk about that with? Who could he go and say, hey, let me tell you what I saw? Because first of all, I can't even explain what I saw. I can't even tell you how wonderful it is. Who could he talk to to relate? And that would give him a, a sense of, pride. I'm, I'm a little bit higher than someone else. I know a little bit more than that person. The Bible says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. Thorns, a thorn, thorns, briars are symbolic of the curse of sin, the curse on this world. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, this world became cursed and thorns are symbolic of that. Paul received that curse, that thorn in his flesh because listen, our flesh is cursed. This flesh is not going to heaven. I'm not going to die and then walk into heaven with my flesh. I'm going to die. This body's going to die. But me, my spirit's going to go straight into glory. A Christian never dies. A Christian goes straight into the arms of God, straight into the glory of God. But my body stays behind because my body's of this world is, is flesh. And that's why God says, I'm going to give you a new body, a resurrected body, a body that can handle my joy, a body that can handle my love, a body that never is sick, a body that never is stressed or anxious or depressed or sad, a body that's just full of glory. You'll have that body one day, son, but you've got to live in this body today. And you know what else? He says, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. In other words, my grace encompasses you. You think you're, you're encompassed by all these enemies. You think you're encompassed by your str struggles and your stress of life. I encompass you with my grace. It covers you. My grace covers you. My grace comforts you. When you think you're low, when you think you're down, when you think you're weak, I already know you're strong because I've allowed this thorn to bring you to a place where you will seek my face and then you will see it's the grace of God in your life and upon your life that makes you strong in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thorns are symbolic. Jesus. Jesus was given a thorn of crowns, a crown of thorns. 
It's symbolic because the Bible says he was despised and rejected. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief and hid his, where his, our faces from him. He was despised and esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. He was cursed for me. The thorns that he endured, those thorns in his head, was my sin, my curse. The curse that I that I that was on my life. The curse that's on your was on your life. He endured that crown of thorns. He was bought. They made this crown of thorns and they shoved it down on his head and the blood was running off his face. And as them blood drops were going into his eyes, maybe keeping him from even be able to see, he was thinking of me. He wasn't seeing blood. He was seeing me. He was seeing my struggles, my, the curse on my life and my, the sin curse in my flesh. And he was saying, I've come to deliver him. He doesn't even know it. He's not even born yet. And through all of his pain, through all his struggle, he brought redemption to me and you. Freedom, liberty from this world. I don't know why sometimes we can't overcome things in our life. I don't. I'm not going to lie. But I do believe that the things that I cannot overcome, the, the, the things that just I wrestle with, if God doesn't take them away and he allows them to be there, it's, it's for a purpose. It's to teach me. It's to show me. It's to help me. Paul said, no, he didn't say. I, I wrote this down. Paul couldn't have reached his full potential without his thorn. He could have never experienced the power of God without that thorn. Because if he hadn't had that thorn, he, he, he would have become disqualified. He would have become to the place where God could use him. God resists the proud. I think I quoted that a while ago. God resists the proud. And if he's going to do something mighty in our lives, he has to humble us and he has to keep us humble. There's people that will come in your life and leave and it will hurt. There's people that you trust. There's people that you look up to. There's people that you value their friendship and they act different towards you or they'll want to leave or, or, or they'll, they, it may be jealousy. It may be resentment. It may just be God is just moving them out of your life. But the point is this, that hurts. That's, that's an infliction. That's a thorn. And sometimes that thorn We'll sit there and it'll be sore and it'll fester. But we have to understand God has allowed that thorn in our lives. God has allowed this situation in your life. God has allowed you to be struggling in the place you're struggling because it's a thorn. It's a gift. God knows it's hard to say, but it's a gift. Your thorn is a gift. I've given to you. He's given to me this thorn in my flesh, this messenger of Satan to buffet me. He's given me this. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Your thorn's a gift. I got a good friend that I love that I talked to yesterday, and he has got a tumor in a, in, in, in a place that just ran his heart and near his lung. And his faith, his strength, encouraged me so much yesterday as he's telling me what's going on and as I'm trying not to let my voice crack I don't want him to feel that I'm the way I'm feeling right now I'm trying to be an encouragement to him he encouraged me he encouraged me because he told his son when, when he told his family what he did he, he hid it from his children through Christmas because he didn't want them to be struggling I'm not going to call his name I'm not going to go there but when he finally told his boys he said one of them smiled at him. His youngest boy smiled at him when he told him what was going on. He said, son, what are you smiling for? He said, because Jesus is going to take care of this. God knows. Lord have mercy. Jesus is going to take care of this. He's got a thorn. Now, you know what? Actually, that word thorn, I believe, is really can be translated stake in the Greek. He's got a stake in his chest in the form of a limb-sized tumor. 
God give him that thorn. It's going to encourage him, his faith. Go ye in all the hospitals and preach the gospel. He's going to share his faith in the hospital. He's going to share his faith with nurses. He's going to share his faith with doctors. And he's going to share his faith with me and you. And he's going to encourage me. He's going to encourage us. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He says, I'm glad I got this thorn because the power of God is in my life. God, please don't ever take your hand off of me. Please, God, because I complain, I whine. I even told him to die. I said, I know I complain all the time. I know I complain. I know I don't like feeling like I do. I know I'm whining. I can't stand gloomy days. God, forgive me for feeling like that. I'm a whiner. Help me. But God, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. He says, when you're weak, you're not really weak. You're strong. You're strong. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore will I take pleasure in, in infirmities, reproaches, necessities, persecutions, distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. We can comfort others when God allows a thorn in our life, the thorns, the, the struggles, the trials, the tribulations. <clears throat> excuse me. He comforts us through that. He does. He carries you through that. You think you're carrying yourself. You think that God is not walking with you. My friend, he's taking the blunt of it. He's letting you feel just a little bit so you know he's, you're, he's there. The bottom line is this. God takes all of this upon him. Sometimes we don't want to give it to him. Go ahead and let it rain. Let it pour on me right now. I'm just, I'm done. I'm telling you right now. God is letting things happen. It's for a reason. And, and, and whatever the reason is, it's for his glory. And instead of whining and complaining about it, instead of getting down in the dumps like I always do, why don't I just praise him right now in the rain? God, I praise your holy name. I praise you, Lord, that I struggle with sadness. I praise you that I struggle. I, I know these people think I'm crazy. My wife over there in the truck is probably going, no, what are you doing? I'm just to the point now where I'm just... Lord, have your way in my life. Have your way in our life. Have your way in our life. Our country's going down the tubes, man. Going down the, the tubes. We got demonic influence leading our country. And in the middle of all this, I'm sad about it being a gloomy day. Think about that. The bottom line is this. Square our shoulders. Realize who we are. Why we're here. Understand that the thorn doesn't make me weak. It actually makes me strong. It separates me from this world and from my flesh. Makes me a warrior for him. Gets me riled up. It's almost as if somebody says, wake up. It's time to fight. Stand up. What are you doing? You can complain all you want, but complaining doesn't change anything. Instead of complaining, why don't you give him praise and glory right now? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why don't you praise the Lord and understand it? Because he's comforting me through this. I can comfort you. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted by God. Hallelujah. Because we don't have a high priest that has not felt our infirmities. We're not serving a God that doesn't understand what it feels like. We serve a God that in all ways was tempted as we are, yet without sin. And he says, because of this, you can approach my throne of grace and mercy with boldness through Jesus Christ and find help in times of trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's worthy of praise. Lord, please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for, for letting the thorn, letting the thorn take my, take my, my praise away. You give me this thorn to worship. You give me this thorn to become strong. And instead of focusing on the thorn in my flesh, I'm going to focus on you today. I'm going to focus on you today. Your potential 
is right in the middle of that pain you're going through. Whatever your, somebody say it, your potential's in your pain. Your potential is in your pain. Right now, say it. Your potential, my potential is in my pain. My potential is in my pain. When I'm sad, when I'm depressed, when I'm anxious, when I'm stressed, when I'm standing out here in the rain, it doesn't surprise God. It, it hasn't just occurred to Him. My potential is in my pain. My potential is in my struggle. Whatever it may be. Maybe financial. May, whatever it may be. My potential is in my pain because when my thorn is in my flesh, it humbles me and gets me to a place of meekness where God can use me for His glory because it's always been about Jesus. Always. And always will. Every president, every governor, every senator, every congressman, every mayor, every person, every Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever, will bow to her knee one day and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God because he's seated on the right hand of the Father making intercession right now for me and for you. He accomplished it on the cross when that crown of thorns was pressed on his head. That didn't discourage him. That didn't stop him. He could have called 12 legions of angels. He's God. He says, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to accomplish the will of the Father, and I'm going to set them free. And even though those thorns that I feel in my scalp, those thorns, spiritual thorns will come to my children. I will give them a thorn. It will bring them to a place where they can hear my voice and be my people, and I will dwell in them and be their God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in His sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless y'all. Y'all have a blessed day.